Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Part of my role here at, at Movies TV Mad is to keep you, the fans, educated, as well as keeping you up to date and having general chit chat about DC, entertainment, film and television in general. What do I mean by keeping you educated? Because mostly you are being manipulated via social media by directors, actors and people within the industry and that work in these big studios. Is Black Adam a successful movie? I can hear you. I can hear you. I know what you're saying. Some of you are so biased. You're saying, this film is definitely successful. And then the other intelligent ones understand that just under 400 million globally for a comic book book movie that probably cost around 150 to 200 million to make isn't a big success. But I can prove to you that Black Adam isn't a huge success. You could actually call it a flop, although it's made more than what they spent. But in kind of modern day terms, it is an actual flop. Right, right now you can buy or rent Black Adam digitally only in the US of A. So this is proof that it's been a failure. How many movies do you know that are available cinematically and on sale and for hire digitally outside of the pandemic? Because despite what box office analysts say today, we are no longer in the pandemic era because COVID is no longer seen as a pandemic. Even the president of the United States has said that. So COVID still exists, but it's not a pandemic. So we are no longer in the pandemic era. We have seen good films make good money, AKA Top Gun Maverick and Minions, The Rise of Gru. And there's been others that have done really, really well. So you can't blame COVID anymore. The truth of the matter is that Black Adam is a hastily rushed, poorly executed movie that I did enjoy in the cinema because I have enjoyed bad movies before, right? But it hasn't made a lot of money. So yesterday, um, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson was in his car. He did one of his videos. He was saying, am I disappointed about the box office? Well, you always want to make more, he said. Now, he's still trying to take credit for Henry Cavill's Superman being in the post credit scene. The only real reason he wanted Superman in his movie is so the movie made more money because he knew Black Adam having his own movie was a bad idea. So basically the cheeky sod tried to have Superman in the post credit scene to upscale the box office of his movie. And it didn't work, it hasn't worked. Now, earlier he was talking about building up Black Adam in the DC Universe, DCEU, whatever he's freaking well talking about, right? Now he's not talking about building up a fight between Black Adam and Superman. Now he's talking about building out the JSA. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a used car salesman, everyone. His film failed, failed with critics and failed at the global box office. Its box office is very, very low. Now, although it's had a lot of rewatchability to it, which it has, and the stats are quite good, the amount it's making are simply not good enough. But I could have told Warner Brothers from the beginning, right? Because this is nothing to do with Discovery. This was, you know, Warner Media. I could have told Warner Media without doing any research that it was financially a bad move to do a Black Adam movie. First of all, who asked for it? And hey, there's films, there's hundreds and thousands of films that have been made that have never been asked for and have been totally successful. Who asked for a Top Gun sequel? Nobody. It was released, it was excellent, it made money. What do we know, right? But, you know, it was obvious that a Black Adam movie was never gonna work because there really isn't a story to tell here. And you know, yes, there is a story to tell here, but you can tell it in a Shazam movie where he's actually the villain, which he's always been in the comics. There was never ever a point in this character having 
his own movie. And the only reason he got his own movie is because of, you know, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's hubris. You know, his arrogance, his ego. He wanted to be front and centre in the DCEU. He was talking about Black Adam versus Superman being built out. He's always talking about things being built out because he thinks that sounds clever. But it's not clever because if he really wanted longevity within, you know, this DC universe, he would have kept his mouth shut and been the villain in the Shazam movies. But he decided he wanted more. He got more and he got his just desserts. And now he's desperately trying to convince you, the consumer, although his movie hasn't made as much as he would have liked, he's still happy with the return it's still in you know he's saying it's still in cinemas yeah and you desperately or the studio have desperately put it up for sale and for rent digitally that doesn't happen normally as i said earlier so this film has hugely underachieved and its execution was simply not good enough although i enjoyed it for what it was but could i have lived without black adam could you have lived without black adam Absolutely, yes. And it's interesting, isn't it? Again, nobody from James Gunn's corner or David Zaslav's corner is saying, we want more Black Adam. Nobody's talking about this. And again, we go back to the thing, you know, is Black Adam going to, you know, have like spin-offs and stuff via the JSA? Wouldn't it be better again just to start again with the JSA and not bother with the JSA we saw in this movie because even though i love Pier pierce brosnan as dr fate and you know atom smasher and all of that i still think there are better versions of the jsa in dc that can be adapted in a better way that's just my opinion they don't even really talk about much of the backstory of the jsa you know the jsa have got such an interesting history in the comic books and they didn't take advantage of this in this movie. Now I know that Black Adam and the JSA have appeared together in comics before and I get that but this film was clearly rushed and just thrown out there and without any thought put to it and we all know that right we can enjoy this film but we can talk about its flaws and this film has many many flaws now they throw out, apart from the Superman cameo, there are other cameos in this film. And I always welcome good cameos. And, you know, the cameos in this film, especially Amanda Waller's, are very, very important. But are they important to the future of James Gunn's and Peter Saffron's universe? Or are they part of the future of Walter Hamada's universe? I think we are talking about the latter here. Because still we have no idea what Gunn and Saffron are planning because they've only just got started. And that's okay, that's fun. And for me, like, The Rock should just be keeping his mouth shut. He had a go at IGN last week for, you know, comparing the Black Adam box office with, um, you know, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And he got angry, I understand why he got angry, but you as the star of the show and the producer of the, not the show, but the movie, should be, you know, you're, you're showing. You're showing that you're under pressure. And that video in the car wasn't meant for us, by the way. It was meant for Warner Brothers Discovery to try and convince them, you know, that he should still be involved in the future of DC. Because let me tell you this, the actors are always the last to know. No actor out there, unless, you know, they're a really, really close-knit confidant of James Gunn or Peter Saffron, are gonna know anything. Now, maybe Jason Momoa knows something about something maybe maybe he knows something about lobo i don't think he does by the way but maybe an offer's been made maybe james gunn said to him listen we're doing away with the old dceu but there's still a place here for you jason we want you to play lobo and jason's all yeah man maybe maybe not i can only add two and two and make four and a half or five even or maybe four because i don't know what the fuck's going on and nobody can claim that they do. Everyone, look, every, every DC fan has an opinion, has the thing that they want. So ultimately, I think that David Zaslav, although publicly he said he's happy with the movie, I believe, listen, this movie doesn't come out digitally at the same time as it's still in cinemas if this film is a success. 
They're desperately trying to amp up this movie as much as they can. You know, and even The Rock has admitted this film is going to make no more than, you know, 3.75, you know, or maybe 400 million at most. It's an embarrassment, you know, to The Rock's ego, and it's not a good result for Warner Brothers Discovery, who are desperate of the cash. But they didn't make this film. They didn't put this film together, but they did try and, and improve it as much as they could. And they absolutely did improve this movie. James Gunn, by the way, is still outing people. So someone wanted him, you know, he was talking about something else, probably Guardians Holiday Special. And um, one of these people from who want more Guardian, not Guardians of the Galaxy, but um, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, even though the bloody series has had six or seven seasons, these people want more and more and more. And so basically this person was rude to James Gunn. And again, James said, I don't know if you think you're going to get what you want, but basically you won't if you talk to me that way. It was not exactly those words, but you know what I mean. Listen, it ain't happening, uh, Legends of Tomorrow fans. The only Legends of Tomorrow you might get is a movie movie reboot, which I think would be really, really exciting because it has got a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe to it. And it could be, I, I tell you what, a Legends of Tomorrow movie written and directed by James Gunn would be pretty cool, but he'd just be repeating himself, wouldn't he? So would it be worth it? So anyway, James Gunn continues to call out people, but refuses to clarify anything. At the moment, he's juggling so many balls, Marvel, DC, you know, he's swatting the haters. It's going to be interesting what happens next. And by the way, if I was Bob Iger, because he's just come back to take over Disney again, I'd definitely be trying to convince James Gunn to stay with Marvel or maybe give him a bigger position over at Star Wars. Imagine if he pulls out of DC Studios and takes, maybe, maybe replaces, uh, you know, uh, what's her name? Kennedy. What if he replaces Kathleen Kennedy as the president of Lucasfilm? What if Bob Iger makes him that offer? Because at this moment in time, he's still there. Contracts can be torn up very, very easy, easily. Now, I believe that James Gunn is a man of his word and he wants to do this and doesn't want to work with Disney anymore. But who knows? In this game, my friends, anything is possible. And right now, nothing is set in stone. We don't have a clue about the future. So keep it here on Movies TV Mad. I will keep you educated and updated at the same time. This has been Movies TV Mad. I meet your host with the most, just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye, au revoir, au revoir.